Well, we have a number of users that work in a number of areas and they are solving problems in, for example, around earthquakes, seismology. So that has obvious reasons in society or uh, meteorology to predict uh, weather or materials design to design better, for example, electronic devices. We just heard a talk here today on, uh, you know, solve problems that we have when we move uh, microelectronics to exascale. And, and so in those areas are drug design. So those are four, for example, areas that they are working on. In all these areas that I just talked about, it is about solving so uh, uh, so-called inverse problems. So, for example, in seismology, use earthquakes to try to get a more accurate image of the earth mantle to understand subduction zones, for example. Or in, um, uh, in material science, is try to find optimal structure, device structures, optimize the material composition. Uh, and in drug design, it's very similar. They go for, for trying to find the best combination of, uh, you know, known chemicals to solve certain problems in protein docking uh, and so on. This is our meteorological service, Meteo Swiss, in Switzerland. And uh, they are one of our customers. So they basically bring their models and we solve. In this case, uh, it was really an interaction between Meteo Swiss our people at CSCS, people at ETH, and then uh, NVIDIA engineers and Cray to, to co-design this system. So the very the fundamental reason why we are using GPU, because in all these areas, you have to imagine we, we are um, solving a, a challenging problem many, many, uh, tens of thousands of times. Okay? And then it is very important to solve these problems on the smallest possible footprint. So we want, you know, instead of using thousands of nodes, if we can use a uh, hundred nodes for one problem, or, or even go to smaller footprint, also energy-wise to have a smaller energy footprint uh, is profoundly important because that reduces cost and makes the, the solution of the problems possible. Well, one area that I, I just want to mention, I said maybe uh, uh, is in the, in the area of meteorology where uh, we have uh, just in, recently introduced a, a GPU-based system for the first time uh, to do operational weather forecasting. And there again, we see the, the same pattern. It's, it's about delivering the product on time. You know, you cannot predict tomorrow's weather the day after tomorrow, okay? And uh, de deliver on time and with a very economical uh, resource, which is, uh, uh, you know, the footprint of the machine energy-wise and size-wise, thanks to the GPUs, is, is significantly reduced. And I think that makes it economically possible to solve challenging problems very fast. And the benefit is more accurate predictions of, for example, extreme events, uh, and which then has impact on transportation and how you manage. The, I think the impact is we really enable faster turnaround of, of these problems. So we have, you know, very large machines like Pit Stein in uh, at uh, the Swiss National Supercomputing Centers that is, you know, of the order of 5,000 GPUs. And so the, the size of the machine and then the, the performance of the individual nodes really allow us to turn around much larger problems uh, uh, faster. And, and that has, for example, the, the benefit that they can really go to realistic problems, for example, in device uh, uh, design.